So we have been living in our camper van for over two years now. And during that time, we have really enjoyed winter camping and snowstorms and just really enjoying the beautiful new snow all around us. I mean, heck, our RV's name is Desert Snow. We're often asked, what's it like surviving a snowstorm in a camper van? So today we're gonna to share with you some important tips on how to survive a snowstorm or a blizzard while living in your RV. Let's get started. Well, first and foremost, you need to know how long the fuel will last in your rig for temperatures like that. And we really suggest like testing them out. Right? Oh no, this is super important, obviously. Very. If you're gonna go off camping out in the wild in a winter snowstorm, you need to know that. Last thing you wanna do is have your heat suddenly stop in the middle of a snowstorm. We actually suggest what Tanya said is to actually test it in an yes. RV campground, right? We need to actually plug back up or refuel very easily, but test it out, run it, see how long you can last in Absolutely. cold temperatures. I mean, it's life or death, seriously, when you get to those sort of sub-zero temperatures or sub-freezing, it really can become life or death if you don't understand or are preparing for situations like snowstorms. Now for us, our heat and hot water runs solely off propane, yes. as well as our propane stovetops, both inside and out. So propane is absolutely critical for us. And last thing we want to do is run out when you're out, obviously in a winter storm, running out. If you run out of propane, we're in a lot of trouble. So yeah. we spend a lot of time understanding how long we can go. And also what we do too, we look to where we're camping to find out where there are propane and refill stations near us in the event we actually have to refill when we're out in the snow. Absolutely. There's a couple things that we have in our arsenal, you know, just in case. You know, one thing we keep on hand is an electric heater, a small portable electric heater. And you'd be really surprised in terms of how efficient that oh, yeah. works. Now, we do monitor that also because what's happening is because it's getting nice and toasty inside some of those compartments that need heat aren't getting the efficient amount of heat pumped in there because the control sensor recognizes right. this area as being warm so we tend to like give it a boost here and there just to kind of offset some of that propane usage but it really does come in handy on top of that ladies you'll appreciate this one induction cooktop so during those winter months i stay away and i really have rarely have ever used a propane burner i use an induction cooktop yeah. because i try to use predominantly heat hot water for our heating source with that propane in the winter yeah. and stay away from that using my induction cooktop which i just love so much i just wish one one thing i wish i did have maybe santa claus might come around the corner oh uh, here we go a renovated kitchen with a double 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 induction cooktop santa ho, ho, ho. <laughs> is your rv all-wheel drive or four by four now we've certainly found that we're when we're in a two-wheel drive vehicle that we're more susceptible to sliding or getting stuck yes in the snow so for us the all-wheel drive is actually very important to us and makes us more comfortable when we're driving. Absolutely, and it's really important to know. I think I have to say this and going back to a quick point, if you know you're gonna be doing winter camping, maybe that's kind of the RV you really wanna consider investing in. Whether it has the two-wheel drive, no, you should have more of that four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive capabilities because I think when you're dealing with muddy or snowy-like conditions, that's your best bet for keeping you out of trouble. Yeah, no, I think that's very true. And just know that if, in, if you're in two-wheel drive, maybe you'll tend to hunker down more and kind of wait out the storm, wait for the roads to get really plowed, salted, and kind of cleared up. Invest in winter tires, or at least excellent all-season tires, and perhaps some snow chains. This is really important. I mean, you need to equip your camper van with really good winter tires, or at least all-season tires, that can help you focus more on the drive and less on the slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, you're so right. I mean, tires are so important. Good snow tires, super important. They make a big difference, right? So make sure you get yourself prepared, like Tanya said. Now, we upgraded our tires to some special tires. I wasn't too sure about those tires, but he could tell you more about them because I actually love them now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're very happy. We actually upgraded to uh, Falcon Wild Peaks. Now they aren't necessarily snow tires, but they're great four season tires. They do a great job in the snow. Now, one thing related to tires, make sure your threads are not worn. Whether you have good snow, you know, if you have like great expensive tires or inexpensive ones, if the threads are worn, it's not gonna matter. You're gonna slide. Monitor weather reports, Tanya. <laughs> 
And this one's super important because when you're up in the mountains in particular, weather conditions change dramatically, I mean, so quickly. And so make sure you stay on top of the weather reports. We actually use AccuWeather. We find it very helpful. It's a, you know, an app on our phone. It does a good job letting us know if conditions change, new alerts are issued, things like that. But that's super important because you don't want to be caught unprepared with a snowstorm kind of, ri kind of rising up and increasing in, in size. This is an important one. Consider an exit plan and a relocation strategy. Now, if a snowstorm is predicted, consider moving to a safer location if possible. And also, if you can have an exit strategy in the event things get worse, you decide to move later. But if that's not possible either, just make sure you're prepared to actually hunker down and ride out the storm. Yeah, and I said it once and I'll say it again. The best way to prepare for any type of snowstorm is prepare for a blizzard, even if it's a simple snowstorm. Bring extra food and water. For us, this is very important. You know, we have two folks, two cats, and we need to make sure we prepare ourselves for at least two weeks in case something happens. We might be going into a destination where we're gonna be there for one week, but we always have preparations for two weeks because you never know what's gonna happen. So bring enough food, bring enough water. And the basic way to do that is you can do things like peanut butter, canned tuna fish, uh, things that package well and can last a very long time. Not to mention, I would always double up on water or get yourself a Berkey like we have. So it's constant. You have enough water to sustain yourself for at least two weeks. Now we don't winterize as we mentioned before, so we're lucky to have a 50 gallon water tank that we bring with us into the snowstorms. Now if you don't have that and you're winterized, you gotta make sure you bring a lot of water. We wouldn't recommend just relying on say a stream somewhere off in the mountains. Make sure you bring your water with you. Pack emergency supplies. Prepare an emergency kit with key items like medical supplies, non-perishable food, extra water, flashlights, things that you will need potentially in an emergency. And sometimes for me, my extra emergency supply kit is 12 year old Johnny Walker Black. <laughs> <laughs> Wear layer clothing and stay warm. You know, layers are important in the winter. I know the biggest thing, especially with us in smaller camper vans, is space. But make room for it, y'all. It's really important to have those layers of warm clothes. Also, a good jacket, good boots, weatherproofing boots, things where your feet aren't going to get wet. Let me tell you, one of the most important things I always try to keep is an extra pair of warm thermal socks because the heat from your feet and the heat from your head is really important to warm the rest yes. of your body all up in between those crevices. <laughs> sleeping bag y'all well that's right we also recommend investing in a high quality sleeping bag and also bringing along extra blankets so in the event you truly get stuck and say your heat kicks out for whatever reason you actually have the ability to just really hunker down with those blankets yeah or if you know you're gonna be out there for a long time and you don't want to really absorb all your propane well you might want to turn it down to a little bit cooler in the evenings and get into that you know negative six zero sleeping bag to keep your body nice and warm and then when you get up in the morning you put the heat on so always about conserving Smart. that propane Pain, right now we talked about having all the supplies but you gotta stay hydrated and eat well you know dehydration can definitely worsen cold weather's effects i personally feel when we're out we're off doing our either snowshoeing or if we're you know cross-country skiing you're exerting a lot of energy there and if you're not basically fueling your body up it can really worsen that cold weather's effect so it's important to think about that and what activities you'll be doing in that cold weather to supply yourself with types of food that will help you sustain that good energy like a banana or protein bars right yeah, no absolutely that's so important even if you don't feel like you're sweating too back to dehydration make sure you're drinking the fluids because you're definitely losing right water yeah and that's so important in that high energy food because if you keep yourself healthy eating well drinking well you'll stay alert and be better to kind of stay warm and also manage the situation that the snowstorm might bring to you yes absolutely that's what i'm talking about avoid overexertion dave <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. I just love to shovel. He does, I'm, all, I'm always shoveling. I like to kind of stay ahead of the snowstorm, so I'm not shoveling a lot. You but probably it, have seen some right. of the episodes. Yeah. I mean, the boy just keeps I'm going. I'm always shoveling. I wake up and he's right. out shoveling. I go to sleep and he's out shoveling. Come on, do it with me, y'all. This is the day the shovel like, lance. He just likes to he shovel. He likes to shovel. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a very good point. It's so important not to overexert yourself in these situations. True. And, you know, just be cautious of that. You do want to make sure you keep the snow away from your rig, especially around the exhaust pipe. If you, if you run your camper, it can be very dangerous if your exhaust pipe gets blocked by the snow. So make sure you clear that out because that can actually create a carbon monoxide problem. Ventilation, y'all. Now, you really need to ensure proper ventilation 
for us in particular, because of that winter camping and all that moisture that comes off your body can really cause some, I call it a, a rainstorm on the inside of your rig if you don't have that proper ventilation, which can turn in the winter months into freezing points and that could damage your rig. Yeah, no, it's very true. Humidity is your enemy and it's amazing in the winter, right? With the moisture, we actually give off just breathing in our living area in the mm -hmm. back. Time is right, we'll wake up in the morning, sometimes there'll be like ice. Ice. On the wall. Yeah. So maybe talk about the trick that we do to help kind of deal with that. Yes, so over time, we have figured out a solution for us and we tend to just crack our max vent fan. We don't run it, just crack it. We have a small portable fan that we use to circulate the air. And if we know it's gonna be mm, a moisturous night. Now, we tend to use a dehumidifier um, as well because that helps soak up, soaks up that additional moisture that can cause problems inside your rate. You're welcome. Bring a backup power source. Now this is important, right? No, absolutely. You should never rely on, say you're going to a campground with power, you should not rely on that power in the event that actually the campground loses power during the snowstorm, which happens quite, quite a bit. Quite often, right? yeah. So what we do, we actually bring a power station with us, a power bank that works very well in the event we actually have to plug in and get some additional power from elsewhere outside of our rig. Yeah, and there's other options with those power banks you can use to charge them like via solar, which comes in really handy. There's a lot of solar panels out there that can charge those power Power banks efficiently and quickly so again if you know your situation where you're gonna be always be prepared get that power bank and whatever supplies you need to keep that power bank rolling in case the campground you're at wherever you are loses power right and we think even if you have a lot of battery power in your rig it's still good to have that separate portable power station available exactly uh, that's a great point always overdo it at times you know I think yes. that's especially during those winter months it's really important to kind of keep yourself safe so go above and beyond a little extra doesn't hurt sleep with the battery if you have to <laughs> Emergency communications. This is very important to stay in communication yeah. with folks like your loved ones when you're out camping in the snow. And part of that, make sure your cell phone is fully charged, mm -hmm. right? Maybe have a small uh, extra charger for the cell phone handy mm -hmm. as well. And maybe even have a Garmin. Yeah, right. I think and, that's really important. I mean, sometimes if you're in areas that don't have power at all and you're in an emergency situation, the Garmin can really help with that. Now I know some phone systems now have what they call an SOS distress yeah. call, but even sometimes in certain areas, they don't work. Right. <laughs> you can't get the SOS. So it's kind of a D-U-D-E. So a dud. <laughs> yes. And one thing we do rely on. Yes. One thing we do rely on when we're off really deep woods camping is our Starlink. Yes. Right. And Starlink helps a lot. If there's no cell service, usually we can, as long as it's not huge tree cover as well. Mm -hmm. Right. But Starlink can give us that signal we need in a pinch. Absolutely. Snow shovel. Let me tell you. And also within that snow shovel, you should have an ice scraper. I can tell you for a fact, it was the funniest thing to see when we were snow camping. This is probably like early two years ago and we did not have a snow scraper. And the first dusting of snow that melted because of all the warmth in here turned into a block of ice and we had nothing to scrape it off except a broomstick handle. <laughs> And it was ugly, folks. It was ugly. It was ugly. It was but, so bad. So don't make, don't make the mistake we made. Obviously, you need that snow shovel. We talked about that, clearing out, especially around the rig. And obviously, the ice scraper. If you don't have an ice scraper for the windshield, it can be a real pain in the neck getting the ice off. Now, I know a lot of folks who use de-icer, which is the formula that's compounded into your windshield wiper fluid. But I've heard mixed feelings about that, whether it damages your windshield or the film on it or the protectant. If you use the de-icer for your windshield, let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinion on that because that might be something we can invest in the future. But I've been pretty hesitant because of the mixed feelings behind that de-icer, you know, windshield wiper fluid that uh, tends to cause some issues with that film that will never go away off your windshield. Let me know in the comments below. And just real quick on a side and safety note, it's very important to make sure you have a working carbon monoxide detector yes. in your camper van, whether you may have a portable, say propane heater, mm -hmm. or you're worried about your exhaust getting blocked from the snow behind you. You just need to have that for safety purposes. So make sure you check that before you head out into the snowstorm. Yeah, and how quickly can you forget if you're, say, cooking on propane inside and you oh, don't yeah. open the windows? Exactly, I mean, that yeah. is a no-no, but you can quick, easily forget that, especially if it's freezing outside. Yeah, get those batteries up to date and make sure those carbon dioxide detectors are working. Now, if you have any questions about winter camping that we have not addressed, or if you've winter camped before and have tips to share, yes. let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear about them. Absolutely, and I will tell you this, if you want to see what your homegirl Tanya looks like first time camping all alone in the snow, 
Well, you can click that video right here. It's somewhere up on the screen, but let you click that. I better bundle up for this one. I gotta put my hood on, mm, cause it's gonna get cold. Mm, <laughs> might as well get snuggly wuggly. All right, y'all. I'll see you in that video.